<laughs> Good morning and welcome to Wells. Wow. What do we need to say after that? Taylor and I are here to light the joy candle. And uh, uh, I'm a bit of a Scrooge at Christmas. And so, uh, but I really don't need to say very much this morning after that. Um, uh, I don't uh, much for cutting down Christmas trees and giving presents to people who really don't want them and <laughs> eating too much food that I really don't need. But no, I am. I really, I really am a, a Scrooge at Christmas. But when I'm gathered with people like this and, and after a rousing morning like this, and when I remember what Christmas is really about, uh, Jesus celebrating Jesus' birth and remembering uh, uh, that, then I can have joy at Christmas. So with that, we're going to, uh, Taylor's going to uh, light the joy candle. Go ahead, Taylor. And we'll have the call to worship. Thank you very much.
We will now have the call to worship. Oh. Please stand as we share the opening sentences. <coughs> Ours is a world of danger and fear, and it can be a real and it can be real to us. Please share the prayer. It is easy to pray for. Our danger is already near. But our salvation assures us that your spirit works in and through us to put fear in its place. We praise your name, O God. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing all verses of him, Numbers. 534, be still my soul. standing. If you will, turn to 887 for our affirmation this time. It's 887. And for those who feel led to do so, let's share it together. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? No. no. In all these more than conquerors through the one who loved us. We are nearer than neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. 
please be seated. Last week we tried this, we'll try it again. A little baby born in Bethlehem, uh, Bethlehem, Bethlehem. A little baby born in Bethlehem, and his name was Christ the Lord. One more time softly. A little baby born in Bethlehem, where Bethlehem, oh, Bethlehem, yeah. A little baby born in Bethlehem. And his name was Christ the Lord. And if that little baby born in Bethlehem is somehow or the other born in you and in me, then we can sing. I've got the joy, 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 joy. babies and joy, we have a joyous moment just now, the opportunity to uh, baptize a young man together with his family, and so we'd like to ask the family, mom and daddy and baby, if they will join us at this altar at this time. He's Bless. got the whole world. Whoa. In his hands, he's got the whole Come on, family. Come on, family. Stand behind. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He got the little baby. In his hands, he's got the little baby. In his hands, he's got the little baby. In his hands, he's got the whole world. Let's take just a moment to pray together, please. Let's pray. Our Father, you do have the world in your hands. And sometimes the things that go on in the world are tough, but we know you're there. At the same time, there are things in the world that are beautiful and joyful and wonderful. What we do this morning is offer this child to you in the grace that you have given to each of us. By grace through faith, we're saved. This is the grace part. For Granger, the time will come when in his own thinking and in his own feeling, in faith, he will affirm his baptism. It's complete now and will be fully complete then. Touch us all with your presence. Bless us all with your spirit. And we thank you for this moment. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. The first question is to all of the family gathered. Will each of you in your own way take honest and sincere time to pray for the life of this baby. We will, good. And mom and daddy, will you all give Granger an opportunity to know our faith, to attend worship services, to grow in wisdom and in knowledge and in favor with God and human beings? Will you all help him to do that? And we always like to say healthy experiences of faith. Is it your desire that this child should be baptized at this time and in this place? It is, okay.
Okay, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's pray, please. You know, God, we all know it's true. Prayer takes a lot of different shapes. And sometimes prayer is simply walking down the aisle with life in your hand. Each of us have been given this gift of life and a gift of faith. In a world of danger and fear, we claim life and trust and faith. And in spite of everything, we know that you are God and that you are there. And more than that, we believe that you're God and that you are here. Baptize each of our hearts with your forgiveness, with your love, and with your chance given to each of us to begin again. Wherever and whatever, we can begin again. And for that, God, we give you our heartfelt thanks. And thank you, too, for the fact that we can join together in praying a prayer that the little baby Jesus, who grew up to be Lord and Savior, taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Please stand as we sing all verses of hymn number 529, How Firm a Foundation.
Please remain standing as we stare Psalm 33, verses 18, 22, on page 768. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who are faithful and hope for God's steadfast love to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in fame. Our heart is glad in the Lord because we trust in God's holy name. Take a little time and greet one another in the name of the Lord. Appreciate you singing that when I come up here. It reminds me. Thank you very much. Glad you're with us this morning. Thanks for, for making it a priority to be here and to worship with us, Wells Folk. If you look on the inside cover of your bulletin, we'll look at our life of the church real quick. Today is Joy Sunday, and uh, we hope that you are gathered here uh, to bring joy to the world. Uh, our charge conference was this past Wednesday evening, had a great uh, time of food and fellowship and learning a little bit more about the church and the way the church works, and we were glad to have uh, Dr. Stephen Cook, our district superintendent, with us as well, and so uh, look for some things that are happening coming around the bend after the first of the year from our charge conference. Next Sunday evening is very important. We'll have our 
Christmas supper party. It's catered, $5 if you can, no more than $20 per family. Uh, we'll also have the choir concert. So here's how you do it. You come for some good food and an evening of blessing. We ask that you will bring, uh, if you will bring a dessert. Desserts will not be, f be furnished. So if you want something sweet, Martha, uh, bring, something, bring something sweet. Yeah, I picked on you. All right. And uh, we are continuing trying to close the gap, the CTG, with our budget this year. So if you can and are able, we ask that you would give. Uh, BJ called me this morning as I was leaving the house and interrupted Jessica by the Almond Brothers, which really bothered me. <laughs> um, somebody got that, yeah. But uh, some of the angel trees, as you well know, certain people buy more than other people. And so BJ explained to me like this. You got three kids, right? I said, yeah, I have, as far as I know. And uh, do you always buy equally for them? I said, well, we try to. She said, well, some of the kids have more gifts than others. So if you would like to make a donation to the angel tree and have not adopted someone, BJ is going to try to close the gap on those that have more than those that don't and try to even up a little bit. So if you will see her, she'll be here after this service and before the 11 o'clock service. Also, men's fellowship breakfast. Keith, would you like to say something about that, brother man? Thanks, Keith and Keith. The altar flowers today are placed by Steve Greeno and Kevin Newman to honor their parents. And uh, adults, if you're really bored, you can have some children's bulletins as well during the service. Birthdays and anniversaries today. You got an announcement? Okay, well, hang on, let me go back. Are there any other announcements? You got it. See that hand? Yes, I do, Jim. Wednesday, you may hear some news stories about a project that six different organizations have joined together to launch. Uh, Salvation Army, Shoestring, Stupot, Jackson Fire Department, AMR, and the Magnolia Roller Mixes, a uh, roller derby team. <laughs> Uh-huh. <clears throat> 
Thanks, Jim. Are there others? Other announcements? What? I'm sorry. I got a uh, text this morning, and it says, good morning. I wanted to let you know that Trina had a great day today. Her breathing seems to be just fine. Y'all have a great Sunday. Tell everybody at church that your prayer, thank you for your prayers, and to please keep them coming. give you a little bit of a trailer. Um, I have a really good sermon that I wrote Thursday before I left to go to see Trina and Bruce, and uh, I'm really not sure I'm going to preach it. I think I got something else bubbling up, um, some volcanic explosions of the spirit maybe for the 11 o'clock service. So if you want to stay and hear a bad sermon, go to Sunday school and stay. <laughs> Other other announcements? Okay, birthdays, anniversaries. Yes, sir. My daughter and her husband are celebrating their 47th birthday. Wow. Okay, yeah, Kim. My birthday is tomorrow. Okay, Bob? 16 years of sobriety. Amen. 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 I see that hand. Ian. Okay, cool. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Beth. Okay. A lot of people in Greenwood. That, that sounds like a, a kudzu vine. Jim. Okay. Yeah. Xenia Minton turned 13 yesterday. All right. It's good to see you sitting back here today. Bob Gates, man, tell me. And I just want to tell you this, man. You keep me happy. Others? Let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Prayer request. Yes, ma'am. Okay, cool. Absolutely. Bernard. Okay, all right. Elizabeth. Peggy. Uh, for Danny, who's going through some yeah. difficult times right now, and uh, for my niece, that's with cancer. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. A prayer for my sister, she's back. I can go with her in my relationship, and I hope she's going to stay. Okay. Yeah, Jane. My sister in law's going through a storm. Okay. For the life of the church at large, and the life of our own congregation, pray that. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'd appreciate y'all's prayers. Uh, Leanne and I drive down to Van Cleve on Friday to pick Grant up after 90 days. And so uh, I, I, our specific prayers are for his reassimilation into uh, the world uh, sans the bad influences that were there before. So your prayers are appreciated, James. My aunt is 86. Okay. All right. Are there others? Yeah, Ron. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Yes, Glenda. All right. Absolutely. If our ushers will come forward.
Y'all join me as we pray together, please. God, it's really good to be here. The music, the opportunity to share and to be together, for a little child to be baptized, especially during this season of the year where we reflect upon your birth among us. For these prayer requests that have been mentioned, we ask that you would answer them according to what's best. And sometimes we may not understand that, so give us the capacity to trust you, the capacity to have faith when things don't happen like we want them to. For the tithes and offerings that are about to be given, God, we thank you that we have a church like Wells. And we pray that this church would continue to function and to be a thriving outpost of the kingdom of God here on Bailey Avenue. May we truly be a light unto the city. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen.
You know why we're here, don't you? Hmm? To listen to the story of the Jesus child. To the story of the Jesus child who became man. Man who was teacher and healer and a whole lot more. The amazing reality of Jesus is that he can't be squeezed into simple definitions. Gestalt psychology teaches that we and uh, everything is more than the sum of its parts. And whenever you begin to think about the life and meaning of Christ, that's what sort of comes to mind and heart, more than the sum of its parts. I don't usually do this, but I did look at my watch, and we have about seven minutes for the sermon and the communion. And uh, so if you were planning on leaving at 8.30, fare thee well. If you don't mind, let's look at the scripture on the back today from Isaiah 12. And let me read verses 1 through 3, and you pick it up and share it with me at verse 4. And that day you'll say, I will praise you, Lord. Although you were angry with me, your anger has turned away, and you have comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord... The Lord himself is my strength and my defense, and he has become my salvation. With joy, you shall draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day, you will say, give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known to the nations what he has done, and proclaim that his name will be exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let the wood come to her. Shout aloud for joy. Be people as I am. For the Holy The word of God for the people of God. In that word, I hope we find some word that becomes personal. Some word that speaks to us in a specific way. Let's pray. Join us, God, for the brief sermon. Join us in the brief brevity of the experience of human life. Enrich it, we pray, even as you did in sending Jesus to us. In his name, amen. We have been talking about time away. One of the things that the church has been kind about is to say that you can take off a little bit more time. I had said we wanted to do some traveling, and we do want to do some traveling. And I said, do you think I can take that much time off? And some of the leadership team said, we've been trying to get rid of you for a long time. (laughs) To take vacation time, that is, you know. And so we have a trip planned, and guess where? To Paris. We thought about maybe we shouldn't do that. I was talking with some friends last week who said they'd been saving for about 10 years to make such a trip to Europe. You do realize that the devil's in charge of all church electronics, don't you? (laughs) And so while she's uh, repairing the PA system, let me go on. Um, They said they just weren't going to go because they were afraid. I don't know um, if you heard that line in your heart place, but I want you to hear it now. I will trust in the Lord and I will not be afraid. Fear is a factor. Fear is a reality. There is danger out there. But you know what? There's danger in here too. Each one of us has not only the reality of a fearful world, but the challenge of trying to live a decent and godly life and to get the bad out so that the good can come and dwell, so that you can have Christmas, which is the birth of Christ in yourself. And so if there was anything that I would want to say to this congregation on this Sunday morning of Advent, is that when you get fear out and faith in, then joy presents itself. This is the Sunday of joy. But fear can only come out when faith comes in. My very first church was Spring Ridge Methodist Church, 1958. Are we on over there? I'm gonna tiptoe through the tulips. In 1958, they sent me out to Spring Ridge Methodist Church, boy. Those people deserve the Congressional Medal of Honor. I 
was very active in the Millsaps Players, and I had played the part of Iago. And I had this costume from Eves in New York, which is the premier costumer. And I had this magnificent black cape that went all the way down to my ankles with a red satin interior. And I wore it that morning, that morning thinking, boy, this will really impress the congregation, you know. <laughs> and uh, nobody said anything. <laughs> they probably thought, oh, this new preacher um, is a little wacko, you know. So on the way out, there was Miss Davis. And Miss Davis is always up front. I mean, she's gonna let you have it just like it is. I said, you know, I'm playing the part of Iago. And I thought somebody would be impressed with my black cape with the red satin interior. She said, we didn't say nothing because we thought you were Dracula. <laughs> a lot of fear in the world, but there's a lot of faith in the world too. And as I see the persecution of Christians and the execution of Christians, and I hear their faith resound across the generations. It was not just those people whose lives were taken on the beachfront by ISIS, but it was that voice that Jesus is Lord that speaks then and now and puts fear in its proper place. You will not destroy my faith with your fearsome activity. That's the life of faith. I will trust in the Lord. I decided to have a night service out at Spring Ridge Church. And I said to the leadership team, I said, I'd like to have a night service, feel moved to do that. They said, that's a great idea. They said, we're not gonna come, but you do it. <laughs> and so I did it and they didn't come. Excuse me. Anyway, I decided to just go out and sit on the front step, a little concrete. And I think the second Sunday I was sitting on the concrete step, um, it was uh, summertime and it was still bright, it wasn't dark. And this 64 Chevy truck goes by down the road below and it stops and it backs up and a hand waves to me and I wave to this hand. And so this truck comes up into the church driveway and this guy gets out and staggers over to where I am and sits down. He smelleth of alcoholeth. <laughs> he saith unto me, <laughs> What are you doing, Keith? I said, we're having a little evening worship service and um, nobody came, so I thought I'd come out here and be in the fresh evening. And he said, well, I'm here. And uh, I said, okay, so we sang Jesus Loves Me and uh, had a little brief talk. He said, do we do this every week? I said, well, yeah. So the next week he comes and he sits right there. In fact, he's waiting for me when I get there. And at the end of it, he said, I'm gonna tell you something, son. I said, what's that, sir? He said, I'm having a difficult time not taking all of this very personally. <laughs> I said, well, Sam, you know, I'm preaching to both of us, you know. <laughs> Sam said, but it's gonna change my life because I have chosen to draw my joy from the waters of salvation. I said, where'd you get that, babe? She said, the book of Isaiah, chapter 12 and verse 3. Sam was well known as a town drunk. And Sam stopped drinking. Sam was known to be abusive to his family. And he stopped being abusive. I will draw waters from the well of salvation. And it is our salvation, that is to say, our experience with God. God's experience with us that allows us to find not only the relief from fear, but also the presence of joy. The kind of joy that the world can't give us and the kind of joy that the world can't take away. You all know, know what a witness is. You know, a group of our guys went up to see uh, Bruce and Trina. Were any girls there at all? John, did some ladies? Okay, Joy and Kate, bless you. To this moment, John can't talk about it without tearing up. You know why? Because when they were sitting in the family room, Bruce said, I'm not going to let you all go see Trina. And I'm sure that their hearts finally fell. And here's why. In just a few moments, Trina came riding down the aisle in her wheelchair. 
using a straw to direct ourselves to be with them. And what they said was, there was a joy that you just simply couldn't express, explain. It was just God's joy. That's what it means when you draw from the fullness of the presence of God and that well of salvation becomes your well and quenches the thirst of your thirsty, thirsty soul. We'll trust in the Lord and let's not fear. Let's hold on tightly in a broken world. But let's remember that God also holds on tightly to us. And if there's anything that remembering the story of Jesus means, it means that life can be joyful now and that life can be joyful in time to come. Just this morning, I reread this story that always just touches my heart. Some of you are too young to remember this. I remember back in the time when you had the telephone where you could pick it up and they would say, operator, can I help you? Any of you remember that? And at the Bay St. Louis, you could call, you could pick the phone up. Uh, this was a long time ago where I was raised after we left New Orleans. And I would say, can you get Mr. Breath's number from me? Oh, just one minute. You know, so it would hook up. Anyway, there was a young boy there that was left home alone a lot. His mom and daddy both worked. And he got to the place that he was kind of fearful. And so whenever he got fearful, he would call up the information operator and would say, um, I need a number, please. And she would give him a number and said, Jerry, are you okay? He said, well, I'm a little afraid. And she said, well, why? And he said, because my canary is real sick. And my canary sings so beautifully, and I love my canary, and I'm afraid I'm going to lose my canary, and I'm very... And she said, we'll pray about that. We'll talk about that. And so the next day he called, and she said, you sound sad. I am sad, he said. Why is that? Well, my canary has died, and I don't know what to know, and I don't know what to do. And she said, what I want you to do is to remember this. You go to where your canary is right now. He said, okay, that's where I am. She said, now I want you to look at your canary. He said, I'm looking. She said, now I want you to say these words. These words. Repeat after me, and he did. There are other worlds for us to sing in. And he did. When he was an adult, when he went back home, he found out that there was still one group of telephone lines that was still available to information. So he excitedly called and asked about his little lady friend. And they said, are you Jerry Trunkett? And he said, yes. Well, Miss Sally died, but we have had an envelope here that's got your name on it. And we thought you'd like for us to read it to you. In fact, she gave instructions that we must read it to you. So he said, okay. Opened it up, and the operator on the other end read, there are other worlds to sing from. What I want to say to you this morning is, in this world, find your song. A song of joy because of your salvation, because of God's grace, because of God's forgiveness, because of God's love. And sing that song until finally you sing it in another place. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen. Let's pray. God, the world wants to make us afraid. And there are people who would love to do just that. In the name of Jesus, we're not going to do it. We're going to do Paris, or the equivalent thereof. We're not going to run away from whatever it is that we must face. But when we face it, thank you, God, that we do not face it, face it alone, for we trust in the Lord, and not in our fear. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's read just that prayer of confession on page 30 for our preparation.
And if you don't mind, at the end of it, let's share uh, the three O Lamb of God passages that somehow or the other brings cl uh, Christ close, I think. We do not presume to come to this thy table. O merciful Lord, trust in God. sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. The God's truth is that we don't know exactly how that works, how the Lamb of God takes away the sins of the world. But what we find is when our faith moves toward Jesus, then our sins are removed from us in repentance and new beginnings. So that on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread and broke it. After he had blessed it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, I want you to take and I want you to eat this and I want you to do it every single time you do so in remembrance of me. When the meal is done, he takes the cup and he blesses it too. And he reaches out toward the disciples and said, now, this is the new covenant, the new deal. In my blood, which is shed for you and, and for many and for the remission of sins and as oft as you drink from it. Do so in remembrance of me. And so we come not in historical remembrance, just dead past remembrance. We come in living faith because the spirit of Christ resurrected is the host of this table. It is he who speaks to us through the consecrated elements. And so let's have a joyful time of communion. Come and receive, rise and go in peace. We're going to ask the ID men to be on one end of the altar, and John and Thomas are going to be at the other. And so as soon as they're in place, then we'll all receive communion.
page 230, verses 1 and 4. One and four. Let's take hands and sing our way out. <laughs> 